need nor reason nor rhyme to taking on the Second Amendment yesterday. There was no political gain to be had. He already owns the radical left in this country. The Hillary voters already will, vo will vote for her. He did this strictly to spite the middle class gun owner in America. That's what he did it for, and that's why he cried. He had such pleasure from taking another shot at the demographic he has such a hatred for. I'm sorry to say it that way, but you know what? Sometimes the truth is what it is. This man has a lot of malice in him towards a specific demographic in the United States of America. I don't have to spell it out for you, do I? That's a, that's a good insight, uh, observation about uh, his intent. Yeah, it's based upon an enmity towards a certain demographic. Here's another little headline for you if you don't have enough for today. you got to listen to the language, and I'll get back to it in a minute. This is what they're writing from Reuters and AP. Germany pledges to act after mass sexual attacks on women on New Year's Eve. They're not saying Muslim. They're saying a drunken mob of men. A drunken mob of men encircled the victims during the New Year's Eve celebrations in the center of Germany's fourth largest city near the Cologne Cathedral. There were rapes, molestations, 90 women were molested, and the most that the Reuters uh, news folks can say is the drunken mob of men, as though they were Germans, but they weren't. It was a mob of Merkel's refugees, the Muslim men that she has invited in, the African men she has invited in, the million, million people that she's invited in are now raping with impunity, and they're thinking that any German woman is fair game because they're considered to be sluts from their sacred point of view. Now, i got to tell you something, which I want to elaborate on at another time, maybe not today. I woke up in the middle of the night in the middle of a rainstorm, and it's just, you know, the pounding, 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 and I had a very clear vision. Hillary Clinton is the American Merkel. She will do to this country what Merkel is doing to Germany, which would be the end of America forever. I'll be back in a minute. I don't know. All the music is irrelevant now. There's no joy left, in the, even in my world. There's no joy in my radio show, because there's no joy in the world. The joy has been sucked out of the world by the vampire. The vampire who shed crocodile tears yesterday has sucked the joy out of the whole world. Yeah, you can blame him for everything that's going on, if you don't mind. From the Arab Spring to the hydrogen bomb. Yep, that's what happens when you have a vacuum. You know, they say nature abhors a vacuum. Well, we sure have a vacuum inside the White House, don't we? What we need is a vacuum cleaner. Okay, WJR, Greg, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Listen, please don't use that phrase with me. I'm not, I'm not a talk show host who needs that. And the only great Americans are those serving in active duty in the military on the front lines. Uh, please go on. So I don't think that they're really pushing North Korea. I just think the little fat boy's a loose cannon. You think he's a loose cannon, but then why would he do this now? Yeah, that's, you know, that is a good question. I, I really don't uh, know. Even a, even a fat boy who's a loose cannon has some degree of reason. Let's say it's not an H-bomb. Why would he even do this? What's he trying to do? What is he doing it for? No, I'm sorry, it's China pulling the strings. China is the owner of the junkyard dog called North Korea. They growl when China provokes them to. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE-SAVAGE. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Welcome to the new China. I'm the President and Obama on the road, the long march, the long march. He's only just begun. He's a young man, after all. Now, we've talked about the uh, nuclear test by North Korea, whether it's an H-bomb or not, doesn't matter. My position is that they do nothing without China's uh, approval. They're a client state of China. They wouldn't exist very long without them. So we have to ask ourselves, as we've done, what is China doing by doing this? And to me, uh, it's because uh, the economic... Uh, uh, collapse in China that seems to be on the horizon is the thing that uh, they want us to ignore and they want to threaten us by the way that if we're thinking of sanctions against China or more specifically as I have called for uh, uh, you know I wouldn't say a trade embargo but I strongly believe that there should be tariffs on Chinese goods as I've pointed out in my last two important books we're one of the only countries on earth that does not put tariffs on foreign goods whether you know it or not if you're an american manufacturer go try to export your product and see what happens with the wonderful countries that we're trading with but anyway that's an issue for donald trump to work out not me so those are some of the topics we've talked about they're the big ones the the bomb is a big issue uh the issue of the second amendment with obama chipping away at it uh, when there's no need for him to have done that i'm baffled by why he would do this I have no idea why he would do this right now. It has no effect immediately. It was simply, I think, to um, spite a certain demographic in America. That's what it is. Now, there's an issue I generally don't discuss, and that's gay issues. You know, they say that for many years, the right wing was basically driven by God, guns, and gays, right? Remember that? It used to be said in the 90s. Well, we talk about God, we talk about guns, and I... I don't talk about the gay issues because I'm a sexual libertarian. I have been for years. I've made myself very clear on the issue. And on that, I'm a Rabelaisian, meaning do as you will as long as it's legal and children are not involved. That's what I really believe. But there are two gay stories that need to be talked about right now. This just happened. Gay marriage challenge. Alabama judge defies the U.S. Supreme Court, and he ordered a halt to same-sex licenses in Alabama. Alabama's top justice ordered the state probate judges not to give out same-sex marriage licenses despite the landmark U.S. Supreme Court ruling legalizing homosexual marriage last year. Now, there's a story related to it on Fox News, by the way, and this is very troublesome. It is coercion, in my opinion. Social agenda victim, they ask? A top doctor at one of the greatest hospitals in America a urologist who has spent years of his life giving away free services in Africa was fired because he would not endorse the uh, LGBT agenda. A prominent Boston doctor and Harvard Medical School professor says a prestigious hospital canned him because he refused to endorse the LGBT lifestyle, which he believes is dangerous and unhealthy. Dr. Paul Church clashed with officials at Beth Israel Deaconess medical center for years over the issue he bitterly opposed the hospital's policy of promoting such events as gay pride week and quote lgbt achievement award ceremonies he said that the hospital stance ignored overwhelming evidence that practices common in the lgbt increased the risk of disease and mental illness according to church who is a cornell trained urologist who worked at the hospital for twenty eight years here's what he said they chose a social agenda that they wanted to promote said Dr. Church, who likened a hospital holding a gay pride event to the same institution organizing an event to promote cigarette smoking. Church, age 66, ran out of options last month when the hospital's 25-member medical executive committee voted to throw him out. Can you believe this? The hospital said in a statement to Fox News that Church's behavior was, quote, inconsistent with BIDMC's established standards of professional conduct. Now, I won't get into the details of this, but what does this tell you about the LGBT community, that they'd be so intolerant? You know, that's what it comes down to. You know, tolerance is a two-way street. You can't ask the entire world to endorse 
your view of the world without giving something in return. And the fact of the matter is, whether you agree or disagree with Dr. Church or with the LGBT point of view, there has to be a compromise in a pluralistic nation, in my opinion. The doctor may be right, the doctor may be wrong, but you don't take a great doctor like this, who has devoted 28 years of his life, who has devoted many years of his life to giving away free services to poor Africans and throw him in the gutter simply because you don't like his politics. That's my opinion. Dr. Church pointed to his long career and compassionate and respectful care of dozens of patients who self-identify as members of the LGBT community. He said that at least one of his gay patients even wrote a letter on his behalf during the investigation. You hear this? This is, is frightening to me. This is right out of Mao Zedong's China. This is right out of communist Russia. Uh, communist Russia, communist China. This is the kind of fascism that should not be coming from a minority community. In the end, we will all suffer as a result of it. This is a good doctor, and he just expressed his viewpoints. He didn't hurt anybody. That's my opinion, and I'd rather not even get into the subject, but I thought that we have to cover it because there are two big gay issues right now in the news. I'd rather talk about, frankly, the hydrogen factor, the terror of ISIS, the fact that federal prisons are now a breeding ground for terrorists because they encourage radical Islam Inside our federal prisons, many inmates are being converted to radical Islam in our own prisons with tax dollars. It gets worse. It is worse than you can imagine. Here's another little story for you if you're feeling good. Hold on if you're feeling good. Don't feel good for too long. Are you ready for this? As Obama tries to disarm us, he floods us with Muslim men at the border. Military-age men are being apprehended at San Diego's southern border by the Border Patrol. Several dozen, several dozen Pakistani and Afghan men entered the U.S. illegally, coming into San Diego from Tijuana. And two of them were found to have ties to terrorist groups, according to a letter sent by U.S. Rep. Duncan Hunter to the so-called Department of Homeland Security. Muhammad Azim and Mukhtar Ahmad, both in their 20s, surrendered to U.S. Border Patrol agents in September. One of them happened to have been listed on the terrorist screening da database for associations with a known or suspected terrorist. The other was a positive match for a derogatory information in an alternative database, according to Congressman Hunter. Well, I would think that the White House has to act immediately and bring these two brave men into the White House and put them in charge of diversity training uh, in the federal government. There's no reason that the crackers at the border had any right to detain them, even though they're on a so-called watch list. That would be the liberal, tolerant solution. Now it is time for some calls. 855-407-282 is the phone number. Let's take the calls. Julie, on the Internet. Julie, you're on the Savage Nation. What's the topic? Yeah, it's China. Keep an eye on the atolls. That's what they want. That's what they need. It's full of natural resources, oil, natural gas. They need it to um, drive, you know, drive their economy. And while everybody's looking at North Korea, they just continue to militarize those those islands, which have, you know, four or five different countries that have legitimate claim to them, and they're driving everybody out. And it's just, it's a nightmare. Well, it's not the atolls themselves. It's the fact that they're using the atolls as, as uh, aircraft carriers once they turn them into uh, landing strips and put some military uh, installations on them, and they want to drill in the South China Sea for oil. I think that's what you're saying, right? Well, yeah, those atolls are just surrounded by just tons of, of natural resources. That they right, the Car but the coral atolls themselves are not what they want. They're using them as staging bases for their military, right? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Gee, I wonder where all of the environmentalists are about the degradation of the coral atolls. You know, there used to be a big, big outcry about the destruction of coral atolls, and, and for good purposes. I myself am a very uh, stringent conservationist, and atolls are very, very fragile ecosystems. But you would think that the Sierra Club would be saying something about China decimating the coral atolls in the South China Sea, but we haven't heard one word from the so-called Sierra Club, have we? Oh, no. There are other two towns. No. You know why? Because in the Sierra Club, they have their heads in the clouds, not on the earth. Julie, where are you calling from? What state? Connecticut. 
Connecticut, and you're listening to me on uh, the Internet, you mean you don't get the strong, powerful 50,000-watt flamethrower signal out of New York City from WABC? 